buenos dias. This is Caipacho with the weekly Pele report. This one is for February 28th, the last day of February 2018. Oh my God, it will never happen again. <laughs> and we're going forward here with what? The moon is in Leo. Oh yeah. And she's there for the rest of today. Thursday, tomorrow, she goes into Virgo. Hanging out, hanging out until Saturday. But, you know, in Virgo, we're going to have that full moon. That full moon is happening tomorrow, Thursday. Yeah? Virgo Pisces, full moon. And not only that, of course, well, I'll get more into it, but the sun is conjunct Neptune. So we're going to have the full moon is opposite the sun and Neptune. Along and still over there in Pisces is Venus and Mercury. Venus and Mercury conjuncting in Pisces on Sunday. Same time as the Sun exactly conjuncts Neptune is on Sunday. Mercury is over there uh, trining Jupiter all this week. Okay, so it's water, water everywhere. <laughs> Chiron still in Pisces. Jupiter over there in Scorpio. And, you know, not only that, but later on this week, you know, um, things really move into, you want to look at your chart and really see what's going on for you around the, the 20s. You know, Pluto's at 20, Mars is at 22, Jupiter's at 23, Mercury and Venus are traveling from 20, you know, up to 27 this week. Uh, you know, Chiron and Uranus are both at 27. I mean, it's just like, we got stuff going on here big time with, um, you know, the later degrees of the zodiac. So, if you have planets in later degrees anywhere, yeah, they're getting schmackered. So, I'm going to be talking about that. Um, the big thing besides, uh, you know, all this great, you know, big Pisces party going on, really, is that it's trying Jupiter and square Mars. Mars is up there in Sagittarius, okay? You know, like I said, at 22 degrees, and it's just squaring everything over there in Pisces. And that's really bringing in a little bit of, you know, angst. That's really what I'm going to be talking about today as we just follow the river flowing flowing down to the sea. Flowers everywhere, going, going, gone. Okay, everybody, speaking of Pisces, let's get down to business because the full moon is in Virgo. And Virgo is about work and about business. And we got this opposition going on between the Sun, Neptune, Venus, Mercury, Pisces, party, and the full moon in Venus that says, hey, come on, let's get real and get down to work and make it happen. So, wow, Pisces wants to take us out, out, up, and away, and Virgo wants to bring us down, in, and get shit done. So you're kind of like, ah, and then what's going on, Mars? You know, kind of in a square to it all, you know, coming in there saying, well, more, 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 more. So, <clears throat> following up on last week's, okay, I read you a little bit about we are still in that mutual reception of Mars-Jupiter. Okay, you can go back to that. Mars-Jupiter is just like, you know, too much going, in, going on, going on, going on, going on. But I really want to talk today mostly about this Pisces. Because there's almost like two kinds of Pisces. Pisces is a full rainbow spectrum. I think I mentioned a little bit last week, everything from, you know, the top to the bottom, from the highest to the lowest, okay? And we also can take that the youngest to the oldest. It is the alpha and the omega, the beginning and the end. Everything comes out of Pisces, out of the infinite dream, out of, you know, multi-dimensional cosmic reality, comes down through Aries, 
Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, impulsively grounds into the earth, comes up through Leo and self-consciousness and personal creativity and up through Virgo. So Aries through Virgo, the first six signs, subjective, inner, personal development in the natural horoscope. It's below the horizon, dark, nighttime. You got a bunch of planets down below the horizon. It's more having to do with your inner subjective reality. Then from Libra all around to Pisces, okay, after Virgo. Virgo is the initiation of Leo, self, into Libra, partnership and relationship and other people. And that's where the moon is moving, yeah, this weekend into Libra and is moving up, out and beyond into transpersonal, the light of consciousness and interaction and communication and relationship with other people. And this is just like so much about life. It's like so awesome, man. Yin and yang, masculine and feminine, light and dark, day and night, in and out. In, inhale, exhale. And so we can kind of, in a way, look at the first half of life from zero to 42. We all have a you know, midlife crisis, midlife transition is 42. Uranus opposite Uranus. Uranus goes around every 84 years. It's a human lifespan. At 42, Uranus opposes Uranus. At 42, Neptune comes into a square with where it was when we were born. So we have a Neptune square Neptune. Around that time, many of us will also have prior, a little earlier than that, Pluto square Pluto. So 38 to 42 is this whole kind of crooks, this whole kind of turning point. And we can also just say, look at this in terms of inhale and exhale. We can look at it in terms of immaturity and maturity as youth and then elder. Yeah, as you know, coming in and coming out of incarnating and then excarnating, of dreaming and then creating. So if we look at Pisces in this way, the first part of Pisces is innocence. It's naive. It's no time and no space. I'm in La La Land. I daydream. I talk to fairies and gnomes. I'm in my childhood state of, you know, no boundaries, no rules, no laws, no limits. And it's beautiful and it's wonderful. And it's the land of fairy tales, the land of Oz. <laughs> I mean, it's great and it's innocent. Okay, there's no, you know, mean motivation, okay? So it's all about freedom. And that freedom is youthful. And it's all about in this inhaling. It's all about me. Think of the baby, okay? The baby wants to be fed and loved and cuddled and nurtured and held and be the center of attention. And, you know, and it cries and does tantrums if it doesn't get its way because it's all about me. <laughs> I, me, my. Innocence. And in childhood, the downside of it can be that we take things for granted. We take people for granted. We take life for granted. We take things for granted that it should just serve me. It should just feed me. It should just be about me because I am this amazing free spirit being, yeah, that has no self-consciousness and no responsibility. It's no ability to respond. I don't have an ability to respond. I'm receiving. I'm incarnating. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm listening that, you know, the angels and everything is, it's all coming into me. It's in, 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 in. It's love. It's receptive. Okay, I want to be loved. It's about me and I am free. You kind of get this? 
because we got the Sun coming up to conjoin with Neptune and Neptune can be illusions and dreams and no boundaries no laws no rules no limits and when the Sun comes around and we've got all this Mercury Venus Neptune Chiron all this stuff going on in Pisces squaring Mars and here's Mars and Sagittarius more more in its mutual reception to Jupiter more more it's like more drugs more party uh, you know more medicine more sex more movies more more it's just like no limits <laughs> it can be overdose <laughs> it can be overindulgence Okay, it can be hedonistic. I can't get enough. I want more, more, more. I was just reading about Jim Morrison, you know. <laughs> you know, you talk about drug overdose, okay. We talk about escapism. We talk about irresponsibility. And that's what the mantra this week has to do with a little bit, yeah. That a tremendous amount of damage and pain can result from over self indulgence where I am not awake I am not aware of my impact of my boundaries of the effects of my actions deeds thoughts and words on other people and on my environment and on the world at large this is part of the problem with the United States. If you look at the birth chart of the United States of America, it's got Neptune in the ninth house, which is illusions, yes, of grandeur, particularly around nature and natural resources, and thinking that they're just kind of unbounded and we can just like suck up, suck it all up and use it all up. And there's going to be no negative effect or something. It's living in la la frickin' land. As you can see, this wreaks havoc on personal relationships, on love relationships, on family relationships. Okay, if we have like no ability to respond and no awareness of the other. So now we look at the other side, the other effect, right? The other manifestation of the elder, of the mature Pisces is not about this subjective inner innocent naive beginning inhale then we come to the amazing exhale so we take in the dream and the fantasy and the infinite potential and then boom through Virgo we start to serve and we start to give and it's not all about me and my freedom and my latest gadgets and my number of likes on Facebook and my da 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 yeah? It starts to come out around and this is Jupiter and Scorpio. This is Pisces. Sun conjunct Neptune in Pisces. This is about humility. This is about devotion. Devotion to spirit egolessness in the in the mature space is what service the ability to sacrifice the ability to lift everyone else and everyone else. it's seeing I do have an effect that my thoughts words deeds and actions can have tremendously positive effects and create joy or totally negative effects and create a bunch of pain so with this self-consciousness born in Leo and developed through Virgo Libra and Scorpio it brings up this Sagittarius and now what Saturn, Lilith, Lucifer, and Pluto in Capricorn. Do not forget Capricorn. This is what's anchoring us, and it's calling us to our duty, and it's calling us to our responsibility. It's calling us to be our brother's and sister's keeper. This is the highest manifestation of Pisces. This is the path to true liberation is really this opening to a higher sense 
of purpose, a higher sense of self, where we exhale out. And it becomes about forgiveness. It becomes about compassion. It becomes about, you know, serving and healing. Healing the planet, healing other people, healing our relationships, even healing our own past, healing our own wounds so that we can what? Be even more present and have even more energy to give even more to the whole wide world. Wow. Yeah, so we it's so and we see that it's not all about me as a separate entity. We begin to see through opening our crown chakra that me is actually connected to everything and all that is. And this is the mystic. Okay? And and Pisces and Neptune rules mysticism. The mystic sees the oneness and unity of all creation. And it's not creation feeding me because I'm a separate being, but it's this whole kind of like, as I put it out, it comes back. What goes around comes around. And the more I give, the more comes back. And the more it just like keeps this creative flow of energy happening. What? Yeah, baby. And that leads to the ultimate what? The Pi ultimate Piscean expression is ecstasy. Ecstasy. So like all this trines to Jupiter and Scorpio, okay? We can have this ecstasy in our lovemaking. And what is that? By lifting our lover higher and higher, we reach our own ecstasy. And you can't reach ecstasy alone. It's like, you know what? There has to be this give and take and this nurturing and exchange that, that really feeds. Yeah, I was just learning about these nine levels of lovemaking. And that ninth level is ecstasy. And it's lifting your partner to that place really brings it about and brings it through. So this beautiful trine of Jupiter, okay, over, you know, uh, you know to Pisces is about serving, healing, giving, and lifting all of creation, thereby healing and lifting ourselves. Or the square from Mars in Sagittarius, you know, my way, my will, my freedom, my, you know, just, da, 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 you know, charge. Okay, you know, that square can lead to, like I say, too much, you know, overdosing, indulgence, uh, you know, illness, sickness. Yeah, you know, uh, we can, you know, uh, disturb our physical bodies. Yeah. So this full moon is also, you know, listen to your body. Your body knows. It's really going to, you know, uh, give it to you, you know, big time here. Today, tomorrow, Friday, Saturday. As that moon, you know, moves through Virgo tomorrow. So there's a tremendous amount, okay, of damage and pain that can result from just being free. as the path to liberation is teaching me that love is not just all about me when when i get overly self-indulgent or overly self-absorbed i can ignore and not see my boundaries or and maybe I'm invading other people's boundaries. Maybe I'm just like ignoring and not connecting with other people. I'm abandoning my relationships. I'm creating a bunch of emotional pain and separation out of just like going into my own self-absorption, right? So, you know, this, you know, this damage and pain can just be about, you know, you know, this too much of my own, you know, my own illusion, living in my own dreamland. So, the highest expression, the path to true liberation, is that it's not all about me, it's all about connection and, and healing and serving and lifting and interaction and wow!
interpenetration, intradependence. Yeah. One more time. There's a tremendous amount of damage and pain that can result from just being free. As the path to illumination is, no, the path to liberation is teaching me that love is not just all about me. Namaste. Aloha. So much love.